grab these uh, products that allow investors to stay in the market but provide downside protection. They were big hits last year, but I want to, we got to educate the viewers about this. Just briefly explain how these buffered products work. Yeah, it's a great question, Bob. And really at the heart of these products, it, you get equity exposure and in exchange for an upside cap, you receive a known level uh, built-in buffer uh, to hedge against downside losses. That's really it. You're trading unlimited upside in exchange for that known level of built-in buffers against loss. And again, with equities dropping in 2022, bonds dropping in 2022, it's all about risk management today. That's what these products offer. And it, it, we just put up a screen, PNOV. This is one of the, one of the uh, buffer products. They protect against the first 15% of losses. There are other ones that, that you provide that are, that are out there. But what, what happens with the first 15%? You, you have no loss up to that. And what happens after that? So very simple, like you said, Bob, downside buffer of 15% against the first 15% of losses. If the market were to drop 16% over a one-year period, you'd be buffered against the first 15% of losses and then take on that last 1% of downside. So market's down 16, you'd be down 1% with the Power Buffer ETF. Okay, now we're going to talk about some other variations on this, but I want to bring you in, uh, Todd. Uh, these products, they, they, they work great in an up market, or excuse me, in a down market or a sideways market, right. but you do give up some upside here if you're in an up market. So this is not some kind of like magic bullet protection against virtually everything. Of, of course, there's risks with any investment, and these, if the market were to go on a tear here, a 2021, a 2017, 2013 type year, you're going to lose it on the upside now. The counter to that, though, would be if you think about the last five years when these products launched, we had a 20% correction in 4Q 2018. We had the COVID crash. And then we had last year, which we were down some 20% at one point. That has been a fantastic environment for the buffered ETFs and why they exist. So I, I, I get the idea that you may miss the upside. But if you're close to retirement, if you're a novice investor that may be scared of getting into the markets, given what's going on these last few years, these are a decent starting point, despite them using options, which may be a little bit confusing. It makes absolute sense to me if you're an older investor and you still want to stay in the market. You don't want to throw your money into cash or bonds or something like that. You have, want to stay in, but you're getting close to retirement or you're in retirement and you want some protection. I, these products make a lot of sense. And look at the money coming in. There's been some very successful products in this in this space. J.P. Morgan's uh, Jeppy. The, it, fire. $23 billion in assets. That's a huge ETF that's out there. Uh, so you have low volatility stocks with that that overlay uh, covered call options, essentially. Uh, I see BlackRock. We mentioned last week BlackRock is getting into this buffer ETF game. They just filed for two buffer defined uh, outcome ETFs um, aiming right. to cushion against the downside while also capping potential gains. So this is in the air. Maybe BlackRock's a little late to the party. But I, I think BlackRock filing for these adds credence to the category, right? You're talking about the biggest issuer stepping in, right? That's more competition for Innovator, but it definitely lends a hand to saying this is for real. And then, you know, the, the other part of it, I think covered call, buffer ETFs, you can make the case that this is the new innovation, right? Innovation was the hot product a few years ago. Everyone filed, followed Kathy Wood and her team. And now you're seeing covered call type strategies, option related strategies to get that income. Through the yeah. equity market now. Uh, uh, Graham, uh, maybe we can um, have a little bit more about the products that you offer. So I, I had uh, Bruce Bond on last year talking about uh, the BALT, uh, the Innovator Defined Wealth Shield, which tracks of the return of the S&P 500 to a cap. Explain that to us briefly. There's a, a, a little bit of a bewildering variety of choices here that you're, that you're introducing to investors. Uh, explain how this one works, the BALT. Well, Bob, our, our goal is to provide and equip advisors with an array of tools that can help them achieve their clients, you know, return and risk objectives. BALT is, is a little different than our typical buffer ETFs. BALT provides a, an approximate 20% buffer every three months against the equity markets um, and has the upside potential attached to that as well. And what we've seen is because every time the market has corrected, the 20% buffer of BALT has really guarded investors against losses. 
And then when the market has had some upside recovery, investors have been able to participate in those gains. And so what we've had since we launched this product about two years ago is Balt has actually generated positive total returns despite the equity markets falling over that same time frame. So Balt is our most conservative defined outcome ETF, and it also has a shortened outcome period. And we find advisors using this as an easy way to tiptoe into the defined outcome space.